Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. I want to talk about something called rigor mortis. Now this is a Latin term. Rigor means stiff, mortis means death. So this is the stiffening that happens after somebody passes away, usually between three to 12 hours after death. Now in order to understand why somebody gets very stiff with their muscles post death, we need to have a look at how muscles contract. All right, so what I've drawn up here is an arm with a bicep and we're zooming in on that skeletal muscle of the bicep. And what you can see is there's a couple of strange looking structures. They're all called filaments. Now you can see there's two major types of filaments. You've got the squiggly filament here, which we call actin, and we've got the red filament here, which we call myosin. Now the myosin filament have these little golf club looking things sticking off the ends with these heads to them. And what basically happens is when you want to contract a muscle, the heads of the myosin bind to the actin, and when they bind in, they contract and pull these filaments inwards like that. And that's how the muscle fiber contracts. Now in order for this contraction called the sliding filament theory to occur, we need two very important things. That is calcium and ATP. Now what I've done is I've zoomed in on these two filaments right here. So we've got the actin filament here and the myosin filament here with all the myosin heads. Okay, next thing is you can see I've drawn this blue line through the actin filament. This blue line acts like a bike chain. It doesn't allow for the myosin heads to bind to the actin. It's locked it into place. So what we need to do is we need a key that unlocks this chain and the key is calcium. Now calcium is stored within the muscle cells and when it's time for muscular contraction, calcium is released and calcium is the key that unlocks this chain. So once calcium is available, this chain falls away. And now what you can see is that there are binding pockets within this actin filament that these myosin heads can bind to. But in order for the myosin heads to bind to these pockets, we need ATP. ATP is produced when we use glucose or sugar to make energy or even fats and proteins as well. Okay, so ATP is our primary energy source. So calcium drops the chain off, binding pockets are now available. We've got the myosin heads, ATP comes along and this is what ATP does. ATP allows for the myosin head to cock into position, bind to the actin filament, and pull the actin filament in. ATP does all of those things, okay? But once that's happened and it's pulled that actin filament in, you need another ATP molecule to pop the myosin head off, cock it into position again, bind, and continue to pull. So that means ATP does the cocking of the head, the binding, and the pulling, but then you need another ATP molecule to pop it off and do the whole thing again. Okay, what happens after death? When somebody dies, calcium is released in huge quantities. This is normal. This in actual fact is one of the ways that we determine cell death is when you get this huge flux of calcium ions. So when somebody dies, heaps of calcium is now available. That means all of these little bike chains fall off on all of your skeletal muscles. Okay, now all the binding pockets are available. When you're dead, you still have some ATP available in the short term. So the ATP binds to the myosin, myosin cocks into position and contracts the muscle. Now it will continue to contract the muscle until our ATP stores are depleted. When you're dead, you can't make more ATP. And what that means is you'll hit a stage in which the muscle is contracted but there's no more ATP available to pop that myosin head back off again for muscular relax relaxation to occur. So this is rigor mortis. You need both calcium and ATP.